Good morning, gentlemen. We continue in Sefer Shmuel Aleph, Perik Dalit. And this is a very sad Perik coming up. Very sad Perik. Vayihid Devar Shmuel. This Pusik, you have to be careful how you read this Pusik because uh, if you don't know where to put the right stop, it'll sound really bad. <laughs> So again, Vayihid Var Shmuel Lechol Yisrael. Stop. There's an esnachta there. And it was the word of Shmuel came to the Jewish people. What's the word exactly? We'll have to see in a minute. Vayetzi Yisrael Likras Plishtim. And the Jews went out to fight against the Plishtim. La Milchama to war. Vayachanu. And they camped at a place called Al Evan Ha'ezer. A place called Evan Ha'ezer literally means the rock that supports. And the Plishtim camped in a city called Afek. Now, the, there is already like a problem in the Pasuk. Because it says, and the word of Shmuel was to all the Jews. So if you just look at what you have in the Pasuk, what would, what would you think the word of, Sh- of Hashem was to Shmuel? Or, or the word of Shmuel to the Jews was? From the context of the Pasuk, what would you think the words of Shmuel were? Go and fight the Philistines. Go and fight the Philistines. That's what you'd think. Anyone would have thought that. Uh, the problem is is going to be one of the bloodiest and the most horrific losses the Jews suffer on a battlefield why would Shmuel tell them to go out into such a war so because of that the Malvim explains that just as it's a continuation of what was going on in the last few psukum that we learned yesterday describing how amazing his prophecy was how he grew and the people grew through prophecy through him so it's a little bit of a continuation continuation that after the previous psukum said and especially that everything that fell from Shmuel's mouth like didn't fall to the ground whatever he said came true so now it's telling you and now the word of Shmuel that was well in advance that was said was now going to be fulfilled and that's what the Pasuk means and now those words are Shmuel to all the Jews that he already said earlier the first prophecy they told Eli that whoever will hear this his ears will ring now that prophecy is going to be fulfilled now. That's what it means. And those words that Shmuel already told. Prophecy regarding all the Jewish people and specifically the family of Eli. It is now about to come true. Esnachta. Pause. Now, how do you see it unfolding? The Jewish people are going out to battle against the police. That's you have to read that Pasuk. Okay. Pasuk base. And the Plishtim uh, formed a battle formation against the Jewish people. And the battle, and the battle spread out. And the, and the Jews are beaten before uh, the Plishtim. And the Jews uh, sustained uh, losses. In, the, in this battlefield to the tune of approximately 4,000 men. So that's already a first loss. So you see now how, how, how this is coming true. Okay. And now the, uh, the, the battlefield isn't a, a camp, as it were. It's like a place in between the two camps where, they, where you have the battle. And the battle then spread out beyond the battlefield, as it were, and that's how many Jews fell, but it, it wasn't a total loss because it doesn't say, as you'll see later on, it doesn't say that, that, that all the rest were running like crazy. No, they just went back to their camp, regrouped. It wasn't like it was the end of the world. I mean, it was bad, but it wasn't like a thorough defeat yet. So that's step one. Puzzle Gim. By now, these are very, very sad looking. And the people came to the camp now, and they have to analyze why did they lose. And the elders of the Jews said, Why has Hashem hit us on this day before the Felishim? So they understood if they lose, it's because that's what Hashem wants. So on the one hand, they're thinking the right way. Right? But on the other hand, they're not thinking the right way. 
because they say Nicha Eleinu Mishilo Es Aron Bris Hashem. Let us take for ourselves from Shilo the Ark of the Covenant of Hashem. The Avodi Kirbenu, and we will and we will bring and we will bring the Ark in our midst as we go out to battle against the Pelishtim. Vayiushienu Mikafo Ivenu, and it will bring salvation for us from the hands of our enemies. Now why would they want to do such a thing? What precedent existed for that? Before they went to battle, they used to carry the ark. Yes, when, the, when in Yeshua's time, right. when they destroyed oh, Yerichal, the it was very clearly delineated that the ark was taken out. So they figure, you know, it's time we brought the ark, that will be of great help to us. Okay, so one more puzzle because we're going to do the two together now. Dalit, Vayishlach Ha'am Shilo, so the people sent for Shilo, and they bring from back from there the Aron Bris Hashem. Look how it's being called, but it's not just called Bris Hashem now. It's Bris Hashem Tzavokos of the Lord of Hosts. Remember, Tzavokos is the new name that we're using for Hashem in this new age of prophecy. And more than that, Yoshev HaKruvim, where the Kruvim sit atop. Now it's interesting. The people said, let's bring the Aaron Bris Hashem, period. Hashem, as the narrator calls it, the Aaron Bris Hashem, Svakois Yeshev Akruvim. A lot more to that name. All right? And, and guess what happens to be there as well? Visham Shnei Bnei Eli. And they're the two sons of Eli. Im Aaron Bris O Elohim. With the Aaron Bris of Elohim. The name has shifted totally now. It's now called the Aaron Bris Elohim. This is the narrator speaking. Chafni and Pinchas, Chafni and Pinchas. So the people called it, what did the people call it? Let's bring the Aaron Bris Hashem. Yud Kei Vav Kei. That means the name of mercy. It will bring mercy from us. And then the narrator first calls it the Aaron Bris Hashem. A much fuller name. And then ultimately, and now you got Chafni and Pinchas there. Now we call it the Aaron Bris Elohim, which is the attribute of justice. The Aaron is an amazing thing. It can bring you tremendous holiness. It's, where, it's the place where the voice of Hashem emanates from. It's the very same place where the voice of Hashem emanated to Shmuel to make him rise to the highest spiritual levels. That's the Aaron Bris Elohim. On the other hand, we know on Yom Kippur, if an unworthy Kayan goes there, he'll die. So it's a double-edged sword that one has to be very careful about. So now we're going to go back over these two psukim and give it to you with the Malbim's interpretation. And the Malbim is going to say that there are four particularly bad things that the Jewish people did. And, uh, and because of these four, let's bring this in the name of the Abarbanel. Four bad things they did, you know, he's going to say why, um, you know, why they took the Aram. And then why ultimately what's going to happen at the end of this parak is the iron is going to be taken into captivity and will go into the hands of the Plishtim, which is probably the ultimate Chilul Hashem that could, you could imagine that the Aram Bris Halakim is, is in Goyish hands. That's unbelievable. Even during the Churban Bias Rishon, the first destruction, and even though uh, Nebuchadnezzar took utensils of Isa Migdash, it was, it was the, the previous king was able to uh, 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 provide, uh, to hide that arm that should never go into Goyish hands. So you can imagine, this is not a small thing that the arm goes into Goyish hands. Well, we'll see. It did the second time, I'm sorry? It did the second time, you know? No, no, there was no. The second, it was buried forever. Once it was buried before the first base. Oh, we didn't have it during the second base in English. Wow. I mean, that's like the unthinkable, right? It, it makes sense. If we don't have it, at least nobody should have it. It should not be destroyed, obviously, and nobody should have it. Right. So, uh, anyway. So, now, he, now he, let's go back over this soup and explain <laughs> what the four sins are. So, number one, the Jewish people were obviously sinners and they were bad and they worshipped idols and the Pesel Micha was still there right and, and that was always during the times of the Mishkan and Shiloh as we'll see later on Shmuel gets rid of it so they still figured they're amazing tzaddikim they say why has God hit us what does Hashem want from us duh let me think now how many years you got that pestle Micha over there? Like a bunch of idiots? 
you know, you have out and out, bona fide, out in the open, idol worship, and you're wondering, hmm, why did we lose this battle? So, uh, now this is obviously going to get Hashem angry because as a Pasuk, the Navi says in Yermio, the Pasuk says, Nishpot Oscha, Hashem will judge you, Al Imracha, for you saying, Lo Chatasi, I haven't sinned. It was, we must have done a very, very hard to find sin. We, we acknowledge we must have sinned, but we've got to really dig deeply because it's such a, it must be such a minute sin that God is exacting such a precise judgment that we can't even figure out what the sin is. You know, it's like incredible. It's incredible. You know, and then, and then, and then you know, Chas Hashem, when things aren't going our way and we start wondering why is Hashem doing these things to us as if we don't have any Averos. And, he's, and it's not like we don't have like little Averos. You know, we've got like huge Averos. You know, like you can just it, 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 spot it right on the page. And we wonder why Hashem does things. You have to know, that gets Hashem more upset. You know, you could say to Hashem, I know I'm a sinner, I know I'm, I'm having trouble overcoming it, and that's one thing. But if you start saying, I wonder why Hashem is, well, why is Hashem telling me this? You know, that gets Hashem upset. You just, you just look in your back door. It's not going to be very hard. So that's point number one. But number two, now, so, um, so, so besides this point, and they thought they were tzaddikim, so now what, do you, now, what do you think you should do? Okay, you're not sure what that there is. So what would be, you know, not what the text is saying. Use your own minds now. Hashem just brought a calamity to you. And, you, and you, you're not willing to recognize the overt sin you did. Fine. You're wondering, well, what did Hashem do? You're making yourselves out like tzaddikim. So what should be the next step you should do? Get rid of the idol, that's for sure. Okay, but let's say they're not getting rid of the idol. Still, what should be the next step? Call out to Hashem. Call out Hashem. Do teshuva. Fast. I mean, something. I mean, the puzzle should mention they do something spiritual now. Bring a korban. I don't know. Do something. We've seen in Sefer Shoftin there were times when, remember when the war with Pelegesh Begiva, same kind of thing. If you recall the same thing. Well, why did so much of our brothers die? You know, and, and you, you don't realize there's also the, the Pesel Micha over there. But then finally, finally, they, they do tshuva. Remember, it was a few times. They said, oh, it's the other people's fault. They didn't come. <laughs> right? So, 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 so what do they do instead? Instead of that, they say, oh, I know what we'll do. We'll go to the local Kabbalist. He'll, he'll give us a red thread. Oh, then everything's going to be fine. We don't have to do any tshuva. We're just missing some Kabbalistic spiritualistic assistance from above I don't have to change keep my little idols and shave it done because that would really cramp my lifestyle and although I acknowledge your Hashem Hashem will we'll pay you off with some superficial thing that looks very spiritual but it's the opposite of spirituality so before they came with the red thread they just took the Arn Kodesh and turned it into a red thread do you understand? That's what the album is saying. Okay, I'm elaborating a little bit, but uh, they, they they said, well, you know, we, we've we've got to we've got to take the ark, and that's going to save it. That for sure the iron's going to save them from the police team, and then Hashem will protect them. And he says, Zem Machsheves Dofi. That's such a you know not correct type of thought, because the iron is not a goal unto itself. Right. Only if you remember what is inside the Aaron? Tablets. The tablets. That's a machlokus in the in the Rishonim. Which tablets were in the Aaron? If there were two two Aarons, broken tablets, whole tablets. Okay, it doesn't matter. They're both holy. It doesn't matter. But the point being, you know, when does the Aaron protect you? When you keep what the Aaron says. Remember the Torah. You know, on the one hand, it's like it can be alive and it can be dead. What do I mean? The Torah is alive and has power and is an urn. If the people keep it, what's that? The Torah. Then the Torah is alive and it's powerful. If all the Jews keep every word in that Torah, then, the, then, then Hashem says, well, of course I have to protect you. What's the question? But if you don't keep what it says in the Torah, so what is that worth? Well, you know, Mezuzah protects your house. 
Nech uh, that protects your house. Protects your house. Did I say it here in another class? Remember I said this a few days ago. I said it to somebody. We have a mezuzah. We think, oh, that's my insurance policy. Having a mezuzah there. I buy the best mezuzahs. $50 for mezuzah. Big home. 40 mezuzahs. $2,000. It's already a year of home insurance. Oh, but it's worth it. It protects me. A nech katog. Oh, that's the Yiddish expression. It means a, 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 a dark day, a night in the day. Nech katog. It's like a, a contradiction in of itself. Yeah, you know, the, the, the only thing the mezuzah does for you is one thing. It's like the Iron Priest Hashem. What does it do? It reminds you, Shema Yisrael Hashem Oken Hashem Echad. And if it reminds you, Shema Yisrael Hashem Oken Hashem Echad, then you make sure not to talk Lashem Hara in such a room. You make sure not to bring Tuma into your house. And then, your home is protected. I'm not going to go so far as to say if you don't have mezuzahs in your house and you keep the, all the Torah, you're protected because you're missing the one mitzvah of mezuzah. But by having the mezuzah and you come in the door and you kiss the mezuzahs and you think for a, a brief moment, it says Shema Yisrael, there's a concept of reward and punishment, there's a concept of listening to Hashem, there's, a, you know, you know, there's heavy duty concepts, many of the six constant mitzvahs are in that mezuzah. And then if you live by the credo of that mezuzah, then indeed your home is very well protected. You're, you are the insurance policy for the house. The mezuzah just reminds you how to be an insurance policy to the house. And so that's the second Avera. Not only are you pu- pu- putting yourself as tzaddikim, and you're saying, I wonder what we did wrong. while well, you know darn well what you did wrong. And now you're saying, and you know what the solution is? Another one of the famous painless solutions to all our problems right we're having trouble in our marriage the painless solution is we'll pay a lot of money to go to a therapist and it shows that we're trying hard to save our marriage we don't listen to anything the therapist says and then of course the next painless solution is we just you know live separately and have separate vacations and you you do what you want and you do what you want and we're just checking with each other Right, that's not. The solutions are supposed to be painful solutions. Okay, moving on to Pasuk Dalit. What's the third crime that they did? Now this is the biggest of all. Well, not the biggest, but they take the ark. Does it seem to say that they asked anybody any permission? I mean, you, Ailey is, is still. I mean, he's he's on the decline, but he's still the last word. Shmuel. We just found out yesterday. He's this new superstar, the spiritual superstar. Don't you ask a Shaila? Don't you ask someone who has Torah knowledge as to what the next step is? Ah, this is unbelievable. You, you understand? There were no other rab- Rabunim or no other Tzadikim. They just, uh, you, well, I guess, who, who do you think were the two they asked? Oh, two, two, two. Frickin' frack. <laughs> Gosh, you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't say that. Chafni and Pinchas. They were not the Gedolim. Did they ask the Urim Vitumim? Did they ask the breastplate? No. They just said, the, the people said, they decided the battlefield, go bring the ark. But they did have precedent with that. Still, it hadn't been done for a long time. The entire Sefer Shoftim it hadn't been done. They don't do it without that stuff. Right? We did it to conquer the land, Hashem said. Now we stopped conquering the land. Then there were a few battles here and whatever, but they didn't bring it out. Obviously, they were not at a level to. They were not at a level to bring it out. You didn't have Yeshua anymore. Yeshua was still close to Moshe, so you had that level. I mean, it was, remember, Shoftim was very period, period of decline. So you know, we haven't yet come out of the decline yet. We're just about, but not yet. So this was like a major blunder, number three. And number four, uh, now of course, now and, now, and who is bringing the number, who is going to bring it out? Well, of course, it's going to have very fond memories. Chafni and Pinchas are going to bring them out. And if you at least have somebody worthy to bring them out and lead them into battle, right? So, so that was mistake number four, right? Um, and that's why it says in the puzzle, it's the iron breeze, so it says it three times. The first time, it says what the people thought the iron would do. It's the iron breeze, Hashem, oh, it has Hashem saying, it's going to help us. Then the author, the narrator says, no, 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 they didn't even understand what they're dealing with here. It's the iron breeze, Hashem, 
Ksev HaKois, Yeshev HaKruvim. I mean, its place is under the Kruvim. The cherubic-like figures, that's where they belong, under the Kruvim. They don't belong on a battlefield such as this. So now they're moving it from its place. They didn't ask Hashem, right? And now it's going to get captured because of the sin of, of Chafni and Pinchas. And once you get Chafni and Pinchas out there, on there, then it's called the Ambris Elikim, where it's only going to exact justice against the Jewish people. So it's, it's really, um, and again, that word Svalkais is also saying there's going to be a change of the way that God conducts himself. And indeed, at the end of this chapter, there's going to be a little hint to the fact that Shol HaMelech is indirectly referenced in this parak. So we're already going to get a hint of the new age with the kingship. So I think this, this is a very important lesson, this battle in terms of, I don't know, everyone has to look at themselves and says, you know, you, know, you have a problem in your life, and how do you deal with the problem? So number one, you know, people say, wonder what Hashem wants from us. Now you're doing overt sins, you don't even want to acknowledge it, and you're playing like a tzaddik. Number two, you look for some superficial uh, gizmo to make things better, such as, well, we'll say Tehillim. Well, we'll give a little tzedakah. Well, we'll change the person's name. Well, we're going to do uh, a wacky Kabbalistic idea. You know, I'm not going to say they hurt, but I'm definitely not going to say that they help. You know, because the real thing has to be is you have to do tshuva. You don't do tshuva, then, 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 then forget it. And then what's the next thing people usually make? And you do these things without asking a, 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 a proper Shiloh. Oh, I saw there, you know, there's, I saw on the website, you know, you can get Kabbalah water from Svat at a very cheap price of, you know, three hundred dollars a bottle, and, uh, and and the guy promises this and that, you know. Well, you have a rabbi right in front of you. If you'd ask him, he would be very happy to tell you the twenty to thirty things you're doing that are terrible. You know, the fact that you, you don't come to Minyan, the fact that you don't give tzedakah, the fact that you don't do this, don't do that, the fact you talk Lashonara, the fact you try to make a chil Hashem as often as you can. Rabbi would be happy to supply you with the information, but of course you don't want to go to the rabbi because you know he'll tell you that. So therefore we just, you know, we'll, we'll take the arm priest Hashem anyway. And then more than that, you make sure that the characters that you align yourself with are also Rishayim, so it makes you look pretty good. We'll ask the rabbi from a different persuasion who will tell us the answer we want to hear, who's also a Russia like you, and a bigger Russia. That's all, that's what it is. Well, now you're going to see what happens when people do that. Hashem gets a bit upset, and it backfires on you. It this, backfires this on you. This ark was not supposed to be removed ever. No, that's not true. It could very well be, you'll see, you'll see, it's not so partial. It's not so partial. Yeah, that, that, that's not necessarily so. If, if, if it's deemed, if, 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 if the right tzaddik deems it's necessary, then it's necessary. It was a removable thing. Wow. Yeah. Is there any involved in this decision? No. Nope. Were you just bypassing? Or they bypassed it. Did he, did he have any authority to say no? Or? You know, the masses come with big muscles. Remember, you know, Ailey is not exactly a powerful guy. Remember, the auspices of the um, high priesthood and Shiloh and all that were probably still not in the highest of esteem. And for all we know, I don't know, for all we know, Shmuel could have been on one of his itinerant teaching missions. I don't know, we don't know. But uh, clearly, you know, there, there, if somebody would have been asked, the Navi would have mentioned it. The Navi didn't mention it. And this, this war with the Philistines, was it just like did you get my email that need that thing photocopy oh no you didn't get it okay forget it it's okay it's okay I don't I need to get to it today did I just bring this on as a calamity just out of the blue or was it something that Sorry, was out of the out of the blue what are you talking about to continue it well things are quiet for Chavli and Pithas are making remember let, let's, 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 let's take this back I would say like this this is my answer to you I think this is the end of Sefer Shoftim. Okay, I should have, I should have, I should have prefaced that. I mean, the beginning, the first uh, uh, these chapters, this, this transitional chapters, you know, till uh, Eli dies and Shmuel takes over, uh, like let's say through when we come to uh, uh, you know Perak. Uh, 
where is this? Right at Parag Zion, in the middle of Parag Zion. That was like the major turning point. Parag Zion, once the ark comes back, Shmuel gathers all the Jewish people together, and then good old fashioned miracles come back. You know. So I'd say the first six chapters are transitional chapters from Sefer Shoftim to Sefer Shmuel. So you ended off Sefer Shoftim, you kind of ended with this really, you know, pit in your stomach. You know, you kind of went, wow, that was about the saddest book I just learned, right? He says, what? What are the Jews going to learn? It was a really relative, I, I want to totally negate it because there was certain greatness there. But, you know, compared to previous Svarim, it was really a, a low point in Jewish history. Although there was a greatness to the Jews. I don't want you to totally misunderstand. They will do this all without a king, all without any central leadership. There is a virtue. Uh, but, still in all, it was an era that could not sustain itself. So, this is the ultimate um, denouement of that, is that a good word? Of, the, uh, of, the, of, that, uh, of that era. Right? Falling of grace. Right? Isn't that what it is? Falling of position. Right? Uh, of, of, the, uh, of the Jewish era. And this was Hashem saying, you know, I really wasn't happy with this. I gave you a lot of warnings, you know. You know, remember that was the up and down? Remember I gave you that chart, right? So now Hashem this is going to be the down, down, down. Because, you know, you never really had a, sh- a show fate. Um, well, I won't say that. But, you, but the ark going into captivity is like, that's it. That's the nadir of, of, that, of, of, of where you're at. So, so then it's you totally. Uh, that's it. And I shouldn't say I really want you to know. I really didn't. What didn't like what was going on, and in fact, it got to the point where nobody was going to Shiloh, except Elkanah. You know, and okay, but it's beginning. But remember, before Hashem will make the final knockout, he has to position you that you have from where to begin with. Continue, and he's got Shmuel primed and pumped and in position. Remember, he's still only twelve years old. Like Shlomo Melech, right? A young superstar is on the horizon. Still can't take over. Ailey's the boss. So you'll see as we come to the end of the chapter, it's a, the house is going to get cleaned out. It just gets cleaned out. The ark gets taken out. Chafni and Pinchas get killed. Ailey dies. One clean sweep of the action. And they lost the ark. So in other words, you've got to go so low to lose the ark already. That's, that's like a Hurban bias. It's like there was a destruction of the temple to a certain extent. So now you hit rock bottom, and now you've got nationals ready to take over, and now he's going to do a tremendous revolution of tshuva. It's going to come up. So what did they do wrong? Go to let's see what the last 400 years were all about. And it's oh, very it's, it's interesting. Each base of Migdash, you know, we said that, that Mishkan was in Shiloh 369 years. Okay, and then it was in a couple other places, close to 400. You see, first base of Mishkan is 410 years, second is 420. See that that number always around 400, 400 like somewhere. Hashem is patient, <laughs> very patient. But uh, eventually, so so that's what it was. This really is the closing of this era, and Hashem just cleans out the house. And, and again, I think I think I'd add one more thing. You, you did not find in the entire shofar in corruption in the kahuna. Like okay, the people were corrupt. But still, the leaders were up to something, right? Somebody, there was some, you know, you, you, if, if there would have been corruption in the Kuna before, we would have known about it. So now you find, I mean, if the leadership is already totally corrupt, then that's it, the game's over. So this is, you look at this, the total destruction of that era. Okay, so now we come to the battle, we come to the battle. Puzzle, yay! Daihi, kevo aron bris Hashem, elamachanet. And it was when the Aram Bris Hashem came to the camp. Did the Jewish people called out a great shout, hey! And the earth was confused. You know, when you hear, you go to a, a, a game and there's 50,000 people screaming, you feel the earth shaking, right? So it's like, Mamish, whoa, the, the team is excited now. So the Malbim says, another of <laughs> He says, the ark comes to the camp and they're screaming out. These were screams of victory. Mm-hmm. That just like the Jewish people destroyed their enemies when the ark went out to battle in the times of Shoftim, especially Yericho, so it will now. And the Malbim says, as quoting the Abarbanel again, 
he says they also sinned why? because by the battle of Yericho Hashem told him don't make a sound until what happened? until the walls came down then you scream out showing this victory but beforehand you don't make any noise you look your eyes up to Hashem you look for salvation from the enemy and when you see the salvation beginning then you call out to Hashem you don't call out prematurely so how did the Plishim react to all this? And the Plishim hear the voice of the Trua of, of, of the loud noise by Yomer and they say what is the voice of Trua this great voice of Trua in the camp of the Jews and they find out and they knew the iron of Hashem has come to the camp okay so uh, so, so they realize it's, it's, it's a problem Vayiru ha plishtim, and the plishtim, um, uh, they, they, now it's interesting how, how you will do this. From the Pasca says, the way it's written, I have, they saw, but the Mavim puts an extra yud in. Vayiru, they were afraid. Okay? Vayiru ha plishtim, they were afraid. Why? Care because they said, Bole kima machane, who got it, come into the camp. Vayiru, oh, you want to woe unto us. We never saw this yesterday, the day before. This is a new turn of events. So they uh, they they are quite uh, quite uh, scared over here because number one, it 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 seems that you know their god is going to fight. It seems that the police worship the law of God too. It doesn't seem they brought their gods to the battle. For them. They said, oh, the Jews brought their, 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 their gods. So woe unto us for two reasons. Because, you know, up to now we were beating them constantly. And, we, and this never happened before. We were able to easily beat them. Now it's not going to be so simple. And plus, the second reason is going to be, Woe unto us, who will save us from the hands of these mighty kings? They seem to, we'll talk about it in a minute. They seem to give a plurality to the Jewish kings. Kings or gods? Gods, I'm sorry, gods, I'm sorry. Thank you, gods. Elohim Elohim. These are the gods. Hamakim es Mitzrayim v'chom Makab Midbar, who hit the Egyptians with every type of, of punishment in the desert. So the Malbim explains, what's the second issue over here? So it's not enough, we don't have any hope to defeat them. But there's a, there's a fear that we will be lost in their hands. In other words, uh, uh, that that because who will save us from all these gods? Because they're, they're, the might of those gods is well known from the olden days, and it's not a limited type of gods. You know, let's say let's say you have a god who only has one strength. You have one strength, so maybe we can back, get past that one power. But, the, but their gods have many, many gods, all types of gods. You can't say he just is a god in, 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 in a specific land like Mitzrayim because it was Mitzrayim and it was the desert and all over. So in other words, they're showing that these gods have power in all kinds of places. So number one, we're going up against an enemy we never went before and it's an enemy, the god, has multiple talents. So, you know, we're, it doesn't look like we're going to win. So this is the initial reaction, the initial fright. But then, as good Philistines, as good warlike people, Pasitess, he skasko, but let us strengthen ourselves. Heal Anoshim Plishtim, and let us be Philistine men. Pentav do Ivrim, lest we must be slaves to the to the Hebrews. Kasher Ovdu Lochem, like they were servants to you, lest we be servants to them. The Yisem Lanoshim, and let's be men. Ten, and let's go to battle against them. Okay, so let's see what the Malbim has to say over here. And then this is where I would have liked to say the Rapsodic piece, but it's okay, we could leave it for another time. It's okay, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter because 
Any time we say it on the plishtim, it'll be it'll be effective. We'll do it on Monday, next Monday. Anyway, again, since they've already referred to the Jewish gods as Elohim Ele in a plural, right? So obviously, uh, you know, this first of all, the Malm is saying this hints to the fact that you know that they don't they really don't believe in the, in the one God theory, right? So they, they couldn't believe there's a primary cause to anything, the primary cause. Because they could have said there's the one Jewish God. They said there's many Jewish gods, right? So it's a bunch of different forces. In other words, once you believe that the God of, a, of the Jews is many gods, it means all you really have is a lot of forces. If you believe that the God of the Jews is one God, then you talk a whole different ballgame. Then you're talking, he's the God. He's the God who created the world. He's the God that can do whatever he wants. Then you can't beat such a God. If that's the primary force of all existence, there's no way you can beat such a God. But if you believe that it's a bunch of gods, it's a bunch of, bunch of forces, okay, so they're very strong, true, but, uh, and they may be stronger than the Pelishti gods, that's also true, but you know what, but mighty people can beat gods. That's the whole, and he himself says this, as is well known in the Greek mythology. The, the Malbum says that if you're really strong that you can take on a God you know? and if you really try your hardest because you know gods don't try so hard so uh, they're limited to how much strength they have they have X amount of super strength but if you as a human being you well up all your energy and now you're going to try harder you could beat up the God that's where they that's their idea of you know the Jewish God God so strengthen yourself and let's be pleased the men we're not like a bunch of animals who can't overcome any gods, but let's be a man. We have human power. We have abilities to sometimes even go supernatural. Hey, that's point number one. We're going to fight like... Right? Attila the Hun. You can imagine all those, you know, you watch those... Uh, uh, those wars, you know, these ancient, you know, those Lord of the Rings place, you know. It's, you know it's, it's that kind of, you know... Right? And even if we don't win, but still strengthen yourself, lest we shouldn't be servants to those Jews. Maybe we won't beat them, but let's not suffer such a humiliating loss that we're going to have to be their slaves. And even if we can't do that, but at least, let's be a man and fight, meaning to say, at least you lose, you lose with dignity. You lose with a sword in your hand and a shield in your hand and you've killed 30 Jews before they took you down. Die. It's the most honorable way to die. Aha. Ani Gever. I am a man. Right? That's the police demata. Okay. So that was, uh, that was their whole idea. And we'll, well, next week we'll, we'll go more into more detail. But let's do another pasuk or two. <coughs> pasuk Yud. By Yilochem who pleased him and the pleased him fought with By Yinogev Yisrael and they beat the Jews again By Yanusu Yisrael of now they ran now I wasn't going back to the camp each man ran to his tents ran home By Yamaka Gedon this was a great hitting this day By Yipol Mi Yisrael Shloishim Elef Ragli and on that day 30,000 infantry men were killed Achmon Uleslam right so nobody went back to the camp. It was just a thorough defeat. How long do we know how many went out approximately? I don't know. We don't know. It's not important. Varon Elohim, we don't even know why the battle took place. We don't even know the conditions, you know. That's what I was asking. What happened? It's just Hashem. You know, I don't know what the specific. I don't know. It's not important. If nobody doesn't say it's not important. Varon Elohim Nilkach. And the ark of Hashem was taken. Ushnev <coughs> Neeli Mesu, and his two sons of Eli died, Chafni Pinchas. And now the prophecy of Shmuel has begun to come true. That was a prophecy many years ago, finally came true. So, Yud based by Yoras Ish Binyamin Mehamarocha, and a man from Binyamin ran from the battlefield, by Yavosh Shiloh by Yomahu, and came to Shiloh on this day. Umadov Kruim. And his uniform was ripped. And there's earth on his head, meaning to say he's 
his his head went into the ground like he was beaten thoroughly and you, you can imagine like such a picture of a guy who's just running for his life now the Talmud tells us who was the Ish bin Yamin Ish bin Yamin was Shaul so there's a little hint with the destruction of one era bringing to the hint of the new era and the Medrash says another amazing thing and you can see what kind of keyboard his shawl was as the police are taking the ark away right and Og uh, not Og Goliath Goliath is around now Goliath he's around man so Goliath has, has taken away the ark Shaul goes running to the ark and he fights and is able to extricate the Luchos he's able to extricate the Luchos out of the ark to at least save the Luchos the tablets is that measures? Some more. The Red Doc brings it. The Red Doc, one second. We'll, we'll end with this plus it. Doc. It says like this. The Red Doc says, it's a Medrash Ra, it's a Medrash Shmuel. Medrash Shmuel. It was Shua Yashol Ben Kish, Shechotav Haluchos Miyad Goyas Haplishi Ubarach Lo. Now, the Red Doc has a question on that. He says, it's very dochak to say that a person took the luchos with his bare hand because yeah. we know there are stories when anybody touched luchos they died yeah. instantly he says it's a far removed shot but you can, you can argue on that because you could say you know but this was to save a chil Hashem and to save a chil Hashem perhaps Hashem allowed him to do that so although but that's the Medrash so Radak you know may not like it but that's what the Ranger says so so indeed so now what will happen when we reconvene on Monday is that Shoal's going to come and we'll give the information to Ailey and we'll see how all the reaction is for that. Okay.